Welcome, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody who is joining today's MBase webinar. My name is Xuan Yan Xu. Today, I will be talking about the systematic searching in MBase and how to use PICO to identify the relevant records for creation of systematic review uh, with an ultimate goal, of course, to improve the clinical decision making. Since this is a very brand new platform, and I would like to uh, go through some of the housekeeping rules, make sure everybody is clear and also familiar with this platform and know how to use it during the webinar. So before we get started, just some housekeeping things. We recommend you to use the full screen to watch this presentation. And if you have any questions, and there is the ask a question feature uh, in the platform. So you can use at the end of the presentation, then I would choose a few of them to answer. Also note that you will find all the recordings in your uh, account page in the Bright Talk. If you go to uh, my Bright Talk and check my feed, you can find what's the upcoming webinars that you have signed in and review the recordings in case you have missed it or you want to watch it for more times. Now presentation slides are already attached to this webinar. You may download it in the attachment and links part or you can also download it when you review the recording again afterwards. And because M -based, because the evidence-based medicine and systematic review are a kind of very broad subject, so today our webinar will be at an introductional level, and I will break it down into four parts. For some of you who are not so familiar with the evidence-based medicine, I will start with introducing the concept of the evidence-based medicine. Then I will go on to talk about the hierarchy of the evidence and what makes the best evidence. Meanwhile, I will also briefly touch on the major organization of a systematic review field. And afterwards, I will spend some time on the workflow of a systematic review the concept of the PICO, and the more importantly, how to formulate a question using the PICO forms. Right. Before we get started, I just want to check if everybody can hear me clearly. So for the for the person who are listening to this webinar right now, would you mind typing something in the question box, such as, I can hear you, or the volume is too low, can you raise up your voice so that I, can some, I get some feedback and I, I can adjust it from my end um, from the technical point? Okay. I hope right now the voice volume is good enough for you to hear it, and then we're just going to continue. Okay, great. Thanks for all those feedback. Thank you. Um, back to this topic. Um, so I will touch on the basics of the evidence-based medicine. I will talk about the concept that forms a PICO search strategy what makes a systematic review, and what is the actual concept of the PICO. And I will show you some examples of formulating a question and using the PICO concept. And then I will give you a demo, and I walk you through in the Embase how to use the PICO search form to build the effective searches. At the end, I will provide some tips and I will provide some resources. And if we have the time, then I will select some of the questions so we can go through it in the Q&A session. OK, so let's get started. I think to start off, let's just imagine 
that you are a doctor and you have just diagnosed your patient with stage 2 prostate cancer. And this patient is 57 years old and not showing any symptoms yet. Naturally, you want to provide it, your patient with the best treatment and with the optimal outcome possible. So what actions and the course of treatment will you choose? The process of determining the most appropriate medical treatment is what we call the practice of evidence-based medicine. To visualize it, evidence-based medicine combines the systematic search for best relevant evidence the expertise of the clinicians in the relevant field, and the patient's values and the preferences. The objective is to provide the best possible care or service for the patient. One of the evidence-based medicine pioneers, Sharon Strauss, the professor of the Department of Medicine at the University of Toronto, together with her co-authors, have published in a book called Evidence-Based Medicine, How to Practice and Teach Evidence-Based Medicine. In this book, they define the five major steps of practicing evidence-based medicine. Step one is to ask the questions. Step two is to acquire the evidence, finding evidence-based resource that answer the questions. Step three is to critically appraise the evidence and make an assessment. And step four is applying the evidence. Step five is to reevaluate the evidence and its application and to make a necessary adjustment. Each step is, of course, important. But today, we are going to focus on the step two acquiring the evidence. The key question here is what makes a good evidence and where to find the best available evidence and how to find them as comprehensive as possible. And before that, we need to first of we need to first understand the level of the evidence and what makes a good evidence. Now, here I would like to highlight the well-known evidence pyramid. So this pyramid uses an ascending level to illustrate the different types of study design according to their increasing quality and the reliability of evidence. The first level of the pyramid, it is at the bottom of the pyramid, is referring to the background information or clinical opinion. A level up is the first stage of testing and observation. For instance, case series, case control studies, and when the case series focus on a large population over an extended period of time for observation and comparison, then it becomes the so-called cohort studies. When cohort studies are randomized and controlled, it then reaches the critical point of this pyramid. Those studies are called randomized control trials. Then one level up is the critically appraised article and the topics. They are often the short summaries of the evidence available, uh, the, the, the summaries of the best available evidences. And finally, then we come to the top of the pyramid is the systematic review. A systematic review uses advanced, defined, and transparent procedure to find, to evaluate, to synthesize, and to appraise the results of the relevant search. And this practice is also designed and aimed to minimize the bias. And systematic review is also considered the strongest, strongest and the highest quality of evidence. Nowadays, there are many organizations that are involved in the producing systematic reviews, providing guidance as well as training on conducting systematic reviews. The most common ones are Cochrane Database of the Systematic Review, the Joyner Brigitte Institute from the Faculty of Health Science and the Medical at University of Adelaide, South Australia. And there are some other well-known organizations, including the Center for Reviews and Dissemination, which is based at the University of York, 
and Campbell collaborations and that promotes the social and economic change through the evidence-based policy. Now, recognizing that evidence-based decision-making brings some strong impact, there is already an increasing focus on the production and the dissemination of the systematic reviews. In the Embase, when you search in entry term systematic review in an explosion way and break down the records by the publication year, it is clear that the publication rate is going exponentially. And meanwhile, increasing published systematic review reference Embase as one of the searching tools to identify the evidence. While during that webinar, I've also seen some of the feedback from the audience that you can't hear clearly. I just want to stop and I have a check again to see if everybody can hear me clearly. Do you still have any problem of processing the audio? Because I have already reached my voice and volume from telephone and connection, the maximum. Just want to check if everybody can hear me. Okay, so I've seen some people responded to say it's very good. Right now it's clear. So I hope that we do, we can continue and um, right. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. Now, <laughs> just want to continue. So here are a few more slides that we want to go through about the concept of evidence-based medicine. Beyond the systematic review we have just talked, actually evidence-based medicine has a lot broader impact and wider applications in the healthcare. You will hear more often about its wide applications such as providing the evidence-based clinical practice guideline, setting the knowledge basis for health technology assessment, and also recently the European Commission published the guidelines on the clinical evaluation of medical devices, so-called MEDDEF 2.7.1. One, reversion four, requiring the device manufacturer also to systematically assess and analyze the clinical data for creating medical device and creating the device clinical evaluation report. So what does a systematic review actually include? And there is no better way than looking at a real example. So this one that we are looking at all together is a Cochrane review published on the February the 4th, 2017. And the title of this review is the Topical Anesthesia for Needle-Related Pain in a Newborn Infant. The review evaluated the efficacy and the safety of topical anesthetics in the newborn term or preterm infants. The table of content lists what has been covered, such as including the abstract, the plain language summary, the summary of the findings, and the background, objectives, methods, results, and additional summary of the findings, discussions, authors' conclusions, etc. All the Cochrane Systematic Review follow more or less the same format and the methods, and this ensures their transparency and the rigor. And if you're interested in reading this review, I have listed the reference at the bottom of the page, but we will come back to this review as an example referring for a PICO concept and a PICO concept exercise searching in Embase later a couple of times during this webinar. So keep this topic in the mind. Now we have actually know uh, what does a systematic review contain. So how is it actually made? Now this diagram illustrates what is the actual process of producing systematic review. The key steps are identify the issue and determine the question, write a plan, and search studies, select studies, extract the data from the studies, combine the data, 
discuss and conclude the findings, then write and publish the review. And then in the end, is the healthcare professionals use the review evidence for decision making. And today, we will more focus on the first and third step, how to identify the issue and how to search for studies. As with any research, the first and the most important is to determine its focus. Clearly framed questions help to determine the structure of a systematic review. It will guide the strategies for locating and selecting studies or data, assessing their relevance and validity. Now, the Cochrane Handbook for Systematic Review of Intervention, that's the version 5.1.0, in Chapter 5 has a very clear guidance on how to review the questions and develop a criteria for including studies. Now, note that we are now looking at the Chapter 5, and there is a plan, of course, from Cochrane to release a version 6 this year, and this will be a major update on the Chapter 5 too. And for more details and find out what's going to be new, I would recommend you to review it on the Cochrane page. For that, I have also provided a link at the bottom of the page that you can go to and check the details. But when we look at the current version, that is version 5.1.0, the Cochrane clearly highlighted that a clearly defined focused review begins with a well-framed question. That's the first. And second is that review questions should specify the types of population, and type of intervention, and the type of outcomes that are of interest. The acronym PICO stands for Participants, Intervention, Comparison, and Outcomes, then help to serve as a reminder of all those requirements. So the next, we are going to look at the PICO concept. We have said that roughly, but let's go through it in a detail again. P for patient, problem, or population. This answers who is the question. For example, the age of the population, gender, and what's the problem? For instance, what disease do they have? And is it severe? At what stage of the disease do they have? P is really answering such questions. And then I for intervention. What's the treatment? It could be, for instance, drug dosage, could be duration, could be route of administration, etc. C stands for comparison or control. What other treatment could be used is this question trying to address. It can be an alternative treatment. It can also be a placebo. And O stands for outcome. What is the desired outcome? It can be reduced risk. It can be reduced more mortality. It can be also increased morbidity or improved the quality of life, etc. So this is stands for the O outcome. When the four elements, patient, intervention, comparison, and outcome intersect, the overlapping area represents the evidence that is addressed by the clinical questions. And often, um, people apply an additional filter, studies type hedges. Hedges are standard, standardized searches, also called as filters, which combines the controlled vocabulary and the natural words and the phrases to search for frequently required concepts. And tested study hedges are often used to improve the recall of, for instance, randomized controls or, for instance, systematic review and other meta-analysis. Now, we can look at a few examples of slicing a clinical question using the PICO concept. First question, let's look at it, is what are the best empirical antibiotic treatment options for bacteria meningitis? Now, 
in this question, we can slice it to P for population. That's the patient with bacteria meningitis. And intervention stands for the treatment. So in this case is the antibiotic treatment or antibiotic agent. Comparison, we do not see any comparison in this question. So we can also consider there is no comparison. And since it's asking the question, what's the best treatment, we can also consider an outcome as a blank. So it's not always possible to define a comparison or an outcome for a PICO analysis. That's something we have to keep in mind. Sometimes you can only fill in one or two um, elements in the PICO question. Second, um, the second example, in patients with prostate cancer, do androgen deprivation therapy reduce the recurrence rate compared to no treatment? Okay. In this case, we can see P stands for, for instance, the patient with prostate cancer, and I, intervention, then stands for the therapy. In this question, the therapy is the androgen deprivation therapy. Comparison, we are not compare with any treatment, and no treatment is then the option for the comparison. And outcome would be, for instance, reduction in the recurrence rate of prostate cancer. Now, when we are considering the outcome, um, it is advisable to be measurable for the outcome. For instance, a study is better to have statistically significant findings. Ideally, outcome should measure quality of the life. And here is another example. Does the application of a topical anesthetic applied on the skin reduce the pain in newborn infants who require a procedure that punctures the skin? Thus, this, this question is trying to evaluate the efficacy of topical anesthetics in a newborn term or preterm per infant. Um, this question sounds very similar and familiar for us. And actually, this is one of the examples we showed for the Cochrane review from the previous slides. This is the review that we are actually talking about. When Reading the abstract and the method chapter in this review, we actually can find a lot more information to address the PICO formula or to address that question. For instance, in the abstract part, you can see that patient population is clearly defined as preterm infants. Intervention is then considered as eutectic mixture of local anesthetics. And in the method chapter, a more detailed electronic search strategy is provided, including what preferred terms have been used, what free text phrases or words are used to compromise the search strings. So with this information, now we can actually make the PICO question or PICO answer much easier, is that P, the population, stands for newborn term, or preterm infants that requiring an invasive procedure involving the puncture of skin and other issue with a needle. And the intervention then is the EMLA or the amethacine. Comparison, there is no treatment. So we can consider as no treatment or placebo. O will stand for the outcome. And here we would probably eager to find out, does this reduce pain? Or does it give baby less crying? So such information will be ideally considered as the um, PICO information. Now, based on the knowledge we have gained from the review, we can actually, uh, we have, we can actually easily answer these PICO questions. Um, so there is also a kind of a, a tips for us when we are trying to find information or trying to slice a PICO question. It is always advisable to uh, review the previous publications and to search for the PICO and search for the strategies that have been used for a similar question. After identifying the questions, we need to translate it into an effective search strategy to find the best and the most relevant evidence. This step requires then some knowledge of medical informatics, 
and the know-how of the searching and where to search for. Now, similarly, in the Cochrane Handbook for Systematic Review of Intervention, in this version 5.1.0, Chapter 6 also has a clear guidance on how to search the studies. Handbook, for instance, Handbook acknowledges that the trial registers and the trial results registries are important source of information. Secondly, Central, Medline, and Embase are considered to be the important source to search for report of trials. Applying the information search techniques, such as using free text and subject headings or preferred terms, are really important for pinpoint the results. On the next few slides, we will look at the third example, the newborn infant with the topical anesthetics, and make use of the search tools that are available on embase.com, try to find the answers. First of all, just some general search strategies building idea in Embase is we always recommend you to start with mTree to identify the preferred terms. Now, for some of you who are not so familiar with mTree, very quick background of mTree. mTree is a controlled vocabulary for describing the biomedicine and life science concepts. It includes a whole range of terms for drugs, disease, medical devices, and other life science concepts. They are all organized in a tree structure and with a stem, main branch, and the narrowed branches. Now, for the purpose of consistent indexing and searching, a group of equivalent terms are generally treated as having the same meaning. And one single preferred term is then used to represent the whole group of terms and also the rest of the terms. This chosen terms is then called preferred terms in mTree. The rest of terms, such as variants, synonyms, are all called non-preferred terms. It is important to take into account both preferred and non-preferred terms when you are developing a very sensitive search strategies. And we always recommend users to start searching in mTree to first identify the preferred terms. For example, the last example we have for the um, newborn infant, we can first find the newborn infant in mTree. And this term is mapped to newborn, and which is defined now as a preferred term. Once the preferred term is found, you can read the scope note or the dictionary definitions. Take the notes of any synonyms listed in mTree, select the relevance, and also consider searching those synonyms in a title and abstract when you are trying to build these search strategies. As such, um, we can already translate the whole PICO concept to a basic search strategy to be used. You may notice that we considered already the preferred term that is using by the slash exp. And we have also used the synonyms for the free text search. They are used by the quote in the one, as a one phrase. And then we also use um, and boolean to connect all the four elements. So that will be p element, and i element, and c element, and O elements. And all the four elements intersect together that will be representing the question or the evidence we try to address by using this PICO question. So just to visualize it, why we use AND to connect them, that's because we want to connect all the four elements and try to address the intersection part of the four elements. In Embase, we have developed a few tools to support you to make the search building process a little bit simpler. First and foremost is the PICO search form. And this was launched in 2016, January. And this form clearly separates our clinical questions into four elements of a PICO that we have just go through. 
and it will automatically combine the search terms you enter within each element and between each element with a correct designed Boolean operators. Left side, you can see the M tree, and this allows you to find the best preferred terms and automatically generate a list of the synonyms uh, when you need to combine and uh, compromise the search. The second tool I would like to mention is the index miner. Index miner was introduced in July 2017. You will find the icon on the results page. The main goal of developing it is to allow you to create a more comprehensive search strategy by saving some time that is needed when you need to look for and discover more relevant terms to the concept of interest. And what Embase does is that it scans the results of your search and rank all the index terms that appeared in the records of your search results. Often you will see the common index terms such as human, child, but if you go through the whole list, you will discover some different terms that are used to index the record, but not as the ones that you have used. So by selecting and applying it to your search query, it will help you to expand the searches more broadly and reaching more different records. Another tool I would like to mention is the Similar Records. Similar Records is introduced in July 2017, and ICOM can be found on the results page. Next to the individual record, and what the system does is to display the first 100 records similar to a record that you are pointing to. The search is executed as a combination of major focus terms that are used to tag this selected record. Then results are sorted by the relevance and then limited to the top 100 records. With a similar records function and index miner, it then becomes easy to build a complex search string by just starting with one record. Suppose you are giving one interesting article or came across this at one conference, starting with only one record, you can then use find a similar record and then based on the index term to mine all the top 100 relevant similar records can easily help you to find some useful and relevant preferred terms. Then you can again combine them by using the correct Boolean operators. Then you will be exposed to a lot bigger of relevant records. And since, of the launch, uh, since the launch, we have already received quite a lot of positive feedback, and then we encourage you to use one of the tools or combining them and let us know what is your use experience of these two new records. And next, I would like to go to Embase and show you how to use the Pico search form and other tools in Embase. And with this, we will try to address this question use this as an example. So does the application of a topical anesthetic applied on the skin reduce pain in newborn infants who require a procedure that punctures the skin? So this is the example we have referred to um, that we cited and used from the Cochrane Review. And we have already looked at it. What are the apical elements that are, can be assigned to this question? So next, I'm going to embase.com. Then I will show you how to use the tools in the Embase.com to actually literally to find all the evidence for this question. So this is you can see is the Embase.com interface, and we can go to Pico search form. And you can see four different elements are already listed for us to type in. Left side is the M tree. Additionally, there is a one more filter for study design. Okay, so let's start with the newborn infant. While I am typing in, Embase or the Pico search form um, provide, is providing me a list of suggestions, so I can choose 
the term that I feel comfortable and I prefer to use as the term we're going to search. Meanwhile, you can see on the left side, M3 already displays the tree structure of this term. So this is a child term of the infant. Click the I icon. You can see more details about this term. And you can also find out when this term was introduced, what are the synonyms, and what is the scope of this term. Now, click this uh, close, and then go back to the M3 and also to the search platform. The term is automatically set for searching for explosion. You can also choose a different search strategy by choosing searching as a major focus or searching as broad as possible. Add the synonyms. Entry will provide you a list of the synonyms that is assigned to these preferred terms automatically. Review the preferred, review the synonyms, and deselect the ones that are not relevant for our question. All the synonyms are searched by default on the All Records page. So we can also be a little bit more precise by searching it in the title and abstract. In addition to the newborn infant, there is another term was mentioned that's preterm infant. So let's type in the new term. And this time, Embase suggested me to use prematurity as a preferred term. And again, you can see on the left side, M3 provides me the tree structure and also where can I actually search to go to the prematurity. So there are two different branches. We can find it. Click the I icon. And to read more details about this term, and this time we can find the history, when is this introduced, what are the synonyms, and what is the Doran dictionary definition for this term. Click close and go back. And this term is again searched by default in the explosion term. We can also choose other search strategies according to your needs to be either extremely focused or be as broad as possible. And we can also add all the synonyms. So now we have 26 different synonyms that is associated to prematurity. Review the synonyms and try to decide or exclude some of the synonyms are not relevant. And choose where you want to search the synonyms. And here I want to choose it uh, search in a title and abstract. You can see while I enter two different terms, Within this element, the two terms are automatically connected by or Boolean operator. You can also choose to combine with AND, NOT, or the other logic combi combinations. It's really according to what you want to find and what you want to decide, de define the scope. So here, I would like to search as broad as possible by including these two terms. I will use the OR connector. And you can also see while I am typing in, Embase already starts calculating the number of the results will show me. And I want to continue to add the intervention. The intervention we have mentioned is the tactic. Mixture of local anesthetics. And again, system provides me a suggested preferred terms. It is searched by explosion term. And I can also choose to add 22 synonyms and search them in the title and abstract. And between the elements, we have talked about that they are using the AND Boolean operator to connect them. And while I'm entering the intervention or limiting the whole search to more specific intervention, the number of the results has been reduced tremendously to about 360. I could continue to add more comparison, outcome, or study design. But at this moment, I think 360 is a reasonable number of records to go through. And I would like to modify it further. So I will then click Show the results. And this will bring me to the results page. On the results page, you can see the search queries we have actually just entered by using the PICO search form. 
it looks rather complex, but what we have just done is simply entering some key preferred terms and choosing the synonyms we want to search. And then here is the history of the search query. And below is showing the 300 records. With the records, you can review them one by one or checking the abstract of the records, looking at index terms, or go through individual index terms to check if there is any further subheading has been, has been applied to these particular terms. What you can also do is to see the full text page or simply go to the record page. On the record page, the information is included, such as original title, author, if the full text link is available, the link that brings you to the full text, original abstract, and drug terms, disease terms, other terms, and also correspondent information, and additional meta information if it's available and it can be picked up. So in this case, in this record, you can see we have also additional information such as CAS registry numbers. If you click one of the link, it will bring you to the PubChem. And we also have a clinical trial numbers. If you click this, we'll bring you to the clinicaltrial.gov pages. Now we go back to the results page. If I want to modify more information, or want to modify and limit a bit further based on this 360 records, there are a couple of filters available on the results page. First of all is some quick quicker filters that you can use. For instance, you want to choose the date of the record that has been published. It can be when the, when the, record, when the literature is published or when the record has been added to the Embase. And you can also limit it, for instance, by searching evidence-based medicine in, for instance, only looking at Cochrane Review or only looking at randomized control trials. And this can be done by, in, by filtering in the EBM filter. Or you are interested in particular type of language for the results. So here is the language selection for you to choose particular population or particular interests. And there are furthermore about gender, age, and for instance, animal study type. Here are more the quick filters area. On the left side, and, and the lower part of the page, you will find more filters that you can apply to. For instance, you can look at the sources of all the 300 records, which are coming uniquely or available uniquely in Embase, what are actually shared by Embase and the Medline, and what are uniquely covered by Medline, but it's also available in Embase. You can also look at, for instance, drugs information, what are the other drugs also mentioned and indexed in among these 300 records? And you can also apply further floating subheading, for instance. Look at more study types you want to choose. And also more about the publication, publication type, journal type, publication year, author, or even some conference abstracts. So there's a lot more filters you can apply on the left side. While we are talking, I can't help to not notice this highlight, the yellow highlights. This yellow highlights represents the terms that we have used in this search strategy. So in, for instance, newborn, premature infant. And those are the terms that has been used in a search strategy will be automatically highlighted in the results page. This can help you to quickly identify the relevant records. Also, don't forget to look at the index miner, that the new tool that we have introduced. You can see the system calculates the number of the terms that appear or that has been indexed in the 360 records. And then you can go through them one by one. And by selecting some of the information or some of the terms that you found interesting and also using the correct Boolean operator to either expand it or limit it. And next to the each individual record, there is similar records function that if you click, brings you to the top 100 records that is associated to this selected records. Okay. 
So now we go back to the original results um, that we created using the PICO. Um, what we can also do is with this 300 records, we can um, export it by using different type of format to export. Lately, we have introduced the new two formats, that is XML, XML and Microsoft Word. And for instance, I'm going to use Microsoft Word as one format for exporting. You can choose what type of information that you want include in this export document, for instance, citation only. I can also choose to include a search query. And more importantly, you can ask a document to highlight the, the, uh, the, the terms that we have searched in those records. So we can now choose an export. And while system is generating the information, and we can click download. And you can see, let me change this. And this is the exporting format in the Microsoft. And then you can see the query included. The records are also included with the reference information. And when there is a term that we have used in a search strategy, is also highlighted in the documents. OK, we go back to the search results. In addition to the export, you can also email the records to yourself or to your colleagues. You can also add them to the clipboard so that you can do the further triage directly on embase.com or review it in the greater detail. This is with the records information. And with the search strategy, so for instance, now we have look at the, all the records. We think this search strategy saves the per, serves the purpose. And I want to do further or document uh, about this query. What I can do is to select it and export it as just we are exporting the record, but we export the whole query in different file format. Or we email this to myself or to my colleague. Or furthermore, I can also save this query in uh, my either being in my own private folders, or I can share this query with the whole group so all my other colleagues is able to review it as well. Furthermore, we can also set up an email alert to actually ask a system to send me any update once this query, uh, once there are new records entered and base based on this selected query. So I can also choose what type format I want to use and what kind of information I want to receive in my email box, how frequently I want to have, and also to set only when there are new results I will receive, or it's going to be just every week I will be pushed as a new notification. So, this, so here are some of the um, records and query management tool we can use on the embase.com. And this is a very quick demo and a very quick introduction of the whole interface. And if you have more questions about how to use the website, how to use those um, searches, or how to use the management tools, you can always click the question mark and go to the help files to find the more the video tutorials or for you to go through it one by one. So now we are going back to uh, the presentation. I want to continue with a few more minutes, just looking at some tips and useful resources and the useful information for you to, to get started. Now, um, for some of you who are new to a systematic review or to literature searching using PICO, I just want to remind that there is a no perfect ways to search. An effective search is always an interactive process that involves both narrowing and sometimes widening a strategy. We start with finding some relevant information. We revise the search statement based on what we did or what we did not find. And then we search it again. 
it is the process actually of constantly modifying the basic search to match the requirements of different access tools that we have and different databases we have. And it requires discussion and of sometimes your subject expert opinions and also a lot of practices on different databases. But there is always some ways for us to get started. So I want to share some common search methods we use and some common methods I often use to get start a comple comprehensive searching. Um, first of all, always to start a, with a, a scoping search. For instance, you can find a Cochrane review or a systematic review to look at the previous work, like what we have done with the example, um, the new uh, newborn infant. We look at the Cochrane review. We find the abstract, and we find the methodologies that ser for searches are used for that review. And we get some ideas how to build a simple search strategy based on existing studies. Now, on the M base, we provide some of the tools for you to quickly access the evidence-based medicine filter. So that's the EBM filter on the quick search page, on the advanced search page, drug search page, disease pages, and device pages. And you can select either only limiting to Cochrane review or more broadly, including other systematic reviews published in the other journals, other databases. And this always provides you a quick hint on uh, how to build a simple search strategy. And when looking at the previous work, there are a lot of ways for you to navigate the information. So you can look at their appendix. You can look at their search methodologies. And always try to assess the relevance of the subject and see if you need to adapt it or if you can directly using all the information. And when the search strategy is published for different databases, for instance, in some cases, it's published only using the Medline search. And then you need to try then to translate some of the search syntax to adapt for the other databases. Also considering using index terms as well as the free text terms, as we have demonstrated. Sometimes you will capture more information in the title and abstract by using the free text search. And um, try to convert subject terms when, there is, uh, when it is needed or necessary. Secondly, using mTree in the Embase to identify a preferred term. In the mTree, you will also find the concept hierarchy. For instance, here you can see the mTree that we have listed all the concepts. But each concept, it contains the upper branch terms, narrow terms, or a child terms, all those information actually can be um, very useful for you to navigate and to select what preferred terms to use. And when you find the M tree or find the preferred terms in the M tree, don't forget to check the term history. Know when this, this term was introduced and note down the synonyms. And also, possibly, we have provided some information, for instance, the definition from the Dorland Dictionary or the scope node, such information can also be very helpful for you to make a judgment on whether using it or how to use it. For example, we have used the eutectic mixture of local and aesthetic. That's the intervention for the example we have taken. Now, in this case, M3 suggested that the preferred term is the EMLA, and it was introduced into M3 in 1984. There are about 15 other terms that can also be described for EMA, EMLA and using different terms or phrases. And additionally, uh, M3 information also provides me what is the CAS registry number. If I want to find out more, click the link. This will then bring me to see the details in the PubChem. And furthermore, when performing an abstract and a title search for any synonyms that is listed in the M3 records, consider using some truncation or wildcard characters. Those can be the star, the question mark, and dollar sign. Now, it, it can be quite uh, co difficult or kind of complicated in the beginning, so I'm just uh, giving a few examples to illustrate the differences between those um, truncational wildcard characters. For instance, I'm using the star. 
when I apply the star to the catheter, that will retrieve a catheter without any S, or catheters, or catheterization, or catheterization in different spelling. And then you can see that it's quite powerful if I'm using the star to apply to a stem of the vocabulary, a word. This can help me actually retrieve a lot more variations of this, of this word. And if I'm using the question mark, for instance, a consider question, this will then retrieve the records that contain the words like considers, but will not retrieve the words like consider or considerization. And there is another way of applying the question mark in the middle of the term. For instance, here, the sulfonyl and the sulfonyl. And I'm, if I'm not sure which word will be used, whether it's O or I, I can use the question mark to just define to be able to retrieve the both words at the same time. Lately, we have also introduced a new character that's the dollar sign. Dollar sign represents one or uh, oh, 0 or 1. So this is maybe advanced than the question mark when we look at the second example. So if I apply this dollar sign to consider, it will retrieve the records including consider or considers. Okay. And there are also some other uh, op uh, the connector that we can use. For instance, next and near. Those are called proximity operators. For instance, if I'm searching meningitis near slash two purulent and with a star sign, this will help me to retrieve the records such as purulent meningitis, purulent bacterial meningitis, and purulent uh, cerebrospinal meningitis, or meningitis with purulent, etc. So this gives me a lot more flexibility when I'm using the next or near uh, such kind of proximity operators. Also, when you are searching, remember that the spelling can be very different in the British English and American English. So also keep in mind, consider some of the different uh, spellings when you are searching. So by, in, uh, by, use, by searching tumor, meanwhile also searching other tumor, or searching diaper, meanwhile also searching nappy. So that can help you not to miss any important information by just, ignore, by just paying attention to the spelling differences between the languages and terminologies. And there's a lot more information that you can actually find or tips you can find. And I'm providing already a link at the bottom of the page that you can reference to. And also on embase.com, uh, when you are searching, either being on the quick search page or results page, we also provide a small link to help you to go to the user tips where that you can see how the truncation or while the card characters are, are used. And also don't forget to apply the limits that we have demonstrated a few limits that is below the search query line and on the left side of the results page. Those can be quite helpful for you to actually define the language, define the study, define the publication, or, uh, or the year of the publication or type of the publications. And uh, just a bit further about the filters. So in addition to the standard filters we have already created on the results page, there are also some other filters that you can use. For instance, um, th that's called then the study hatch. So for instance, there is a randomized control trials. And there is a hatch of filters specifically developed and designed and also tested by the researchers and published to actually help users to retrieve randomized control trials uh, in different databases. And also there is a way to find what are the cohort studies or case control studies. And such kind of information, I have um, summarized so two links that you can actually reference. One is from the um, one is from the uh, McMaster University. They have developed such search filters in Embase through Ovid, and then they have assembled a list of the terms and the phrase that you can use. So this is the first link I'm providing at the bottom of the page. And secondly, then you can also go to Embase help file or support page to find what we have adapted more for Embase.com use. So that can be also slightly different. Um, I would recommend you to look at both links when you are searching very specific studies and just try to be precise in retrieving those informations.
Also, a few more words on the uh, management or tool management or record management um, uh, tools that we have on the Embase.com. And you want to use, then you must register and log in Embase.com every time that you're using it. So then you can uh, share the records, email the records, export the records, um, review or triage the records in the clipboard. And also, you can manage the search queries, share it, export it, or email it to yourself, or save it even uh, to your private folder or to your uh, shared folders. And there is also a way for you to look at, again, when you want to review the search queries. So in the search folder, save the folders, you can look at the queries when this was updated, when this was created, and when this was updated, and what is the relevant results for that update. And um, when you want to so again, this is a more kind of tool management. And you can then export the searching history. Or either you can um, make a document and for a review later, or just easily to email it and also to document it in your inbox. Um, I have used a lot of resources to uh, make these presentations as clear and as basic and simple as possible, easy to, uh, to explain to you. And here are some of the information that I have used, actually, uh, while I'm preparing and when I'm doing some actual searches in Embase.com. So there are some information, for instance, uh, available at the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine, uh, a lot of tools and resource information available. Cochrane also has an online learning module for everybody to look at it, and it's introduction level. And the University at Edinburgh also has a very simple, but actually very informative step-by-step -step guide for people to get started with PICO. And there are a few more examples for you to exercise and slicing the PICO uh, questions into four different elements. And there is a very good examples I have provided here. And don't forget, we have Embase Support Hub. So if you're new to Embase, I suggest you to look at Embase Support Hub in uh, new to Embase, and also to look at the PICO search form that we are uh, we suggest the people how to use. And you can also find all the previous webinars that we have uh, made and also recorded for you to reference and also for further um, learning and for information. So with that, um, we have covered today some basic of evidence-based medicine. And then we have talked about the concept. I gave a demo. And I've also shared some of the tips and searching for resources. And with that, we are actually at the end of the webinar. And if you have any questions, we probably won't be able to address it today. But please feel free to contact me using the email address or the support hub request the form that I have listed below. And if you want to review these recordings, this will be quickly available.